please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. It's that after the sports show. We're rolling through the NFC North as we roll through every team. We're predicting every record. We're doing it live as we look at it. I don't know what Minnesota's record is going to be until we get to the end of this episode because that's how we're doing it. We take the game, we be the result, and at the end of this entire thing, we're going to know who's going to the playoffs and who's going back to the draft pool. Minnesota up next. Obviously, the number one receiver in the entire NFL, a force to be reckoned with. How big a force? 184 targets for Jefferson. He caught 128 of them. Obviously, that's number one, but that's just a ridiculous number. Speaking of ridiculous talent, we've got with us the Adam Hulse, NFL writer at Sports Kita at AdamHulse.com. Minnesota today, a lot of these games already predicted, and a lot of the wins from last year because of this guy, Justin Jefferson. The term generational talent, I think it's tossed around a little bit too loosely today. It's used on too many guys, but Justin Jefferson truly is a generational talent. He's off to one of the best starts to his career of any wide receiver in NFL history when you look at his statistics. This guy is special, that's for sure. How the Vikings are going to do this year, we're going to find out as we go through this schedule. I'm not exactly sure what my record is going to be at the end, but I think it's going to be a little bit less wins than last year because I don't think they're as good as their record thought that they were last year. The stat alone just kind of shows you what we're dealing with. It's the Justin Jefferson show, and that's really about it. Cook did very well, 11th in PPR, 6th in rush yards, had over almost 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns on the ground, 2 through the air, but he's not there anymore. That puts even more pressure on Jefferson, and I'm not going to say that that gives defense is the opportunity to key on the guy. Defenses were already keying on the guy and he dropped over 1,800 yards on him and eight touchdowns. So I don't think that really matters, but they did get rid of Thielen, which means the wide receiver number two is KJ Osborne, who went for 650 and five last year on 60 receptions. The supporting cast is not great. Kirk Cousins, I think it's fair to say, is on the backside of his career, still performing, still doing well. QB four in yards, 4,500, a lot to do with Jefferson, obviously. Uh, QB5 for touchdowns with 29, plus he ran another two in. Very respectable, still putting up good numbers, still 66% completion percentage, which is the same as Hurt. It's a percentage, so it's also the same as Murray. Percentages can always get skewed. They went one and one against Detroit. They get one and one against Green Bay, and they swept Chicago last year. Those four losses that they took, finishing at 13 and four, were against Philly, Dallas, the one to Detroit, and the one to Green Bay. They did make it to the playoffs. As Adam has pointed out, they lost that game, gave it to the Giants, and it's because of a horrible secondary. We're going to go through it. We're going to see how they finish. I don't think they're going to finish 13-4. and four. No, I mean, you know, to their credit, what you can say about last year is those four losses, there's not a bad one on there, right? All four of the teams that they lost to were right in the mix to be playoff teams or in the playoffs. Still, when you have a secondary like they have that gives up that many yards and points, when your supporting cast on offense takes a step backwards that embarrassing loss to the Giants in the playoffs and that was a loss to the Giants to me that wasn't a Giants win that was a Vikings loss for sure. We'll see how that all plays into factor this year. That defense finished 31st in yards overall. They finished 31st again in passing yards allowed. They finished 20th in rushing yards allowed. So work to be done and they didn't really do a lot of it in the offseason but we'll see you know how it plays out. In the end you've still got well performing Kirk Cousins and a ridiculous Justin Jefferson. So schedule is going to matter. Let's get into it. Week one they play Tampa Bay. We've already given Minnesota the win. For me, it's because it's Tampa Bay, and I just don't have a lot of faith in them. For Adam, it's more about for me, just the quarterback situation. And Kirk Cousins is definitely a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield. You add in the fact that this is Baker's first game with a new team. I got the money. Week two, they go to Philadelphia. They lost to Philadelphia last year. They're in Philly in week two. We both said that they lose again. Uh, yeah, I mean, Philly, somehow, some way. 
way they magically work their cap situation and they're bringing just about everything back from last year for the most part with giving Jalen Hurts that huge contract. Leading up to this offseason, we said that Philly's window might suddenly and quickly close uh, because of the cap situation. It's still wide open and Philly is a dangerous team this year. Philly's going to be really dangerous this year. Week three, Chargers come to Minnesota. If you with, listen to the Chicago or the Green Bay episode, the running theme is the unpredictability because they don't seem to live up to their potential. With the Chargers coming to Minnesota, it's in a dome. I like the Chargers offense when they get it rolling. I hate the Minnesota defense, and so on paper, this would seem to go the Chargers way. I'm actually gonna give Minnesota the win because I just don't have a lot of faith in the Chargers defense to be able to stop Jefferson to the point to where Minnesota can't win. I'm actually picking the Chargers to win this game for a couple of uh, the reasons that you actually laid out. In that it's in a dome, so weather doesn't matter. Justin Herbert, obviously one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league. He can pass against any defense. You give him that ugly passing defense in the Vikings, I think this is a big game for Herbert and the Chargers win on the road. Definitely not going to argue that. It 100% could happen. Kansas City comes to Minnesota for week five. I'm going to let you start off with this one because I almost want to do something crazy here. I mean, you might want to do something crazy. I'm not doing something crazy here. Very simply the Chiefs are better any way you slice it. Uh, no matter where this game is played, when this game is played, I'm taking the Chiefs. All right, fine. We'll take the Chiefs. Because it's, it is the right pick. I mean, Kansas City is obviously a better team. Minnesota doesn't have anything to stop. Kansas City's offense is in Minnesota, which I like. Jefferson's numbers just honestly blind me. He's kind of had me thrown back. But you're right. Kansas City is the better team. So we'll give Minnesota the loss at home in week five. Week six, Minnesota goes to Chicago in week six. I gave Minnesota the win. You gave Minnesota the loss thinking that Chicago can pull this off. Kind of, you like to do the home-home split thing. Yeah, that's pretty much what it came down to for me. Unless one team is like so superiorly better than the other, I go for the sweep in a lot of situations when teams are somewhat close or irrelevant to close. I like home-home split. I see the Bears and Vikings that way. San Francisco comes to Minnesota in week seven. I gave Minnesota the win. It's the home game thing for me. On paper, San Francisco should absolutely dominate this game except for one thing and that's the quarterback we don't know who's going to be playing it by week seven they will they'll have it locked in i'm definitely shooting an outside shot throwing up a prayer that minnesota is going to win this game at home against san francisco but i did it adam playing it a little smarter and giving minnesota the loss quarterback could be the equalizer there uh, we don't know which one of the three quarterbacks is going to be playing for san francisco but the niners are so good everywhere else that regardless of which of the three quarterbacks are playing i think they can beat the budget if you listen to the Green Bay episode, you know in week eight that Minnesota is going to travel to Green Bay. I don't like dome teams outside. I just don't like it. And so I gave Minnesota the loss. You said that Minnesota is just a better team and they're going to beat Green Bay in Green Bay in week eight. Yeah, I mean, this was one of those situations where I didn't go with my home-home split. If you go back and listen to that Packers episode, I'm not high on the Packers at all this year. I just don't believe in Jordan Love having a good year this year. I don't know about the rest of his career, so I went with the Vikings. Double up on the NFC South for week 9 and 10. They travel to Atlanta. We both gave Minnesota the win. You take a dome team, put them back in a dome against a team like Atlanta. Justin Jefferson has a big day against Atlanta in week 9. We both give Minnesota the win there. And the same thing with New Orleans. New Orleans probably give them a little more of a game, but again, Minnesota's back in a dome. You're giving Cousins and Jefferson the chance to work. New Orleans defense probably their weakness overall, not that they don't have a few of them, but I would say New Orleans defense is probably their biggest weakness. And so Minnesota gets two wins against the NFC South in weeks nine and 10. You mentioned the dome factor with Justin Jefferson. Also going to be some hometown Justin Jefferson fans with the Falcons, with the Saints, with Justin Jefferson coming from LSU. I mean, that's LSU territory right there. He'll be amped up a little bit more. Take the Vikings in both. Week 11, they travel to Denver. Denver, a tough place to play just because of the altitude. Then it's outside 
outside. I don't think it's really too cold yet in Denver. It's not hot. You actually got some really good weather. Is Denver going to be clicking enough? Will they have been able to turn around? Do we get Russ back? Are they good enough to beat Minnesota? I think they are good enough to beat Minnesota, especially when you factor in that the games at Mile High would traditionally over a lot of years. Mile High is one of the most difficult stadiums for road teams to play at. You also factor in that the Vikings very rarely ever have to travel to Mile High, so it's going to be a very different and new with Urian playing there. I got the Broncos all the way. They just played two games in a dome, and then their first outside game is in Mile High. I agree. Minnesota with the loss in Week 11. Week 12, go back, listen to the Chicago episode. You already know Minnesota gets the loss with Chicago coming to Minnesota. I went the opposite. I did the opposite of the home-home split thing. You went ahead and gave Minnesota the win. Yeah, I mean, I like home-home splits, obviously. You like to go with that road-road split, which is, you know, a new angle to take on it. But whether you slice it home-home, road-road, it's still one and one either way. <laughs> either way, yeah. Can't get around it. Minnesota swept Chicago last year. So to give Chicago a win, I, I guess I'm being kind of nice. Week 13, Minnesota gets their bye week. Week 14, they go to Las Vegas. Another game against a beatable team, but a team that's going to give you a game every single time. It's in Las Vegas. It's in the heat. Still in week 14. It's still hot in Las Vegas. Hometown crowd. I said it in previous episodes. Max Crosby. That guy's just a beast. I'm, I'm on Team Crosby all day. That guy's an animal. He's, he's the George Kittle equivalent of a defender. He's just out of control. Guy's out of his mind. Being in Las Vegas, I'm going to give Las Vegas the win. Yeah, I mean, this is a tough one for me to pick because yeah. the bye week plays a factor here. It being in Las Vegas plays a factor. So those two things kind of cancel each other out. I think Justin Jefferson should have a huge day against the Raiders defense. But on the yeah. flip side, Devontae Adams should have no trouble having a huge day against the Vikings defense, you know? So it's kind of like strength and strength. Very difficult one to pick uh, because I'm really truly on the 50-50 fence about this one. I'll go with the home team and give it to the Raiders. Yeah, I'll be honest. I knew you were going to go with the home team, and I know that this one is a hard to- hard one to pick. So this way, at least as a team, we're covered. 50-50 split is right on the nose. Yeah, like this is just one of those games where like I don't see an edge. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see, like, an angle that makes me say, this is why I want to pick this team. Uh, because all of those factors are kind of canceling each other out. Well, I give defense to Las Vegas. You got two of the best receivers in the game, so a push there. Quarterback is kind of a push because you don't know which Cousins you're going to get. You don't know which Garoppolo you're going to get. Running game, I'll give to Las Vegas. I'll give Jacobs over Madison, although I do like Madison. I just think Jacobs is better, and so I guess slight edge to Las Vegas. The home home pick, I think, is going to be the right one, but I'll, I'll go against it. Week 15 at Cincinnati. Cincinnati, just a fantastic team should be a good game you know on paper these two teams are supposed to play each other well but Cincinnati's just got a better defense and so uh we gave Cincinnati the win Minnesota the loss yeah I mean I'm not so sure that it's going to be a great game I think Cincinnati can win this game big with their passing offense with Burrow and those receivers playing at home in Cincinnati against that defense they're gonna put up a lot of points it is at home it is outside now Minnesota has it the worst of anybody in this division if you consider division games being the worst Minnesota's got to finish all three of their last games against division opponent. Detroit comes to Minnesota for week 16. I'm giving Detroit the win. I think Detroit's going to have something to play for. They're going to need this win. Minnesota, again, they finished very, very well last year at the end of the season. This one's hard for me, but I'm going to give Detroit the win. I'm going to go the other way. Another situation where I think this is a home-home split type of thing. Both of these teams fairly equal in terms of how good they are. Kind of their expectations. Both these teams think that they should win this division this year and they have a case to be made that they should be the top team in this division based off of what happened last year and going into this year. Similarities there. Home home split again for me. Green Bay comes to Minnesota. We've I've already said Minnesota's going to lose. You've already said that Minnesota's going to win this one at home. Because I just think that Minnesota is going to have something to play for in this one and by this point in the season, if you go back and listen to the Packers episode, I'm 
not so sure that they will. Not really sure why I gave Minnesota. I'd have to go back and listen to the episode why I gave Minnesota the loss here, but I did. And the last game at Detroit. Last game of the season, I am going to give Detroit the sweep. Yeah, I mean, I already said home-home split, so I am giving Detroit the win. But, I mean, the big story going into this game could very possibly be that the winner of this game wins the division, right? This could be one of those situations with where these teams could be heading, with the way you see that they're, you know, we picked this schedule for the Vikings. I don't think anybody's running away with this division, so circle this one. This could be that flex game in the last week of the season that goes to the night game, a lot like the Lions and Packers were last year that the Lions won. This time, it might actually be for the Lions to possibly punch a ticket to the playoffs. They're playing at home. I'll give them the win. Yeah, this one could mean a lot, as right now you've got Minnesota at 8-9, and nine, and so a couple of those games go a different way. Uh, that Detroit game goes a different way at the end. I mean, we've already done the Chicago episode. I won't ruin it there. This game could mean a lot, and Minnesota definitely finishing well in the thick of things. As you said at the top of the show, no real runaway winner with this one. 8-9 for Minnesota, 7-10 and ten for me, definitely kind of supporting that theory. Yeah, and I mean, you know, that last game with Detroit really could mean something, not necessarily even for just the division, but the NFC is pretty open in this wild card race. There are not a lot of great teams in the NFC. There's a lot of teams that have a shot to make noise in the wild card race. The Vikings could be in that mix. If they lose that last game to Detroit in 8-9, and nine, that could possibly eliminate them from wild card. You're not going to want to miss the last episode, which is Detroit. You're not going to want to miss any of these episodes in the NFC North. I don't want to spoil it, but I can tell you right now before we get to the Detroit episode, Minnesota is not the winner of this division, even as of now. Who is? Go back to the other episodes and find out who's going to win this division outright. A lot of people think Detroit is. We're going to see if that holds true as we go through the entire schedule game by game. Catch all the episodes at that effing sports show. You can find us on YouTube if you want to throw it up in the background. You can find the links to anywhere you want to listen on podcast. Just throw in keyword EFIN and you'll find those there. NFL writer Adam Holtz on Twitter at Adam Holtz Sport. Make sure to go check it out. Troy finishing up NFC North coming up next. We'll see you there. Be safe, everybody.